Karima, I had uh, the privilege of listening to you speak in Saskatoon uh, earlier this year to uh, a group of students. And you talked about your vision for registered nursing and for nursing in the future. So I'm wondering if we could start by you just um, outlining that vision that you, you have for nursing in the future. I think the vision is entrenched in the theme that I described when I took my presidency on at CNA. And the theme was unleashing the power of registered nurses. I truly believe we need to do that in order to get to the next generation healthcare system in Canada. So to me, that comes from three places. One is moving from advocacy to action, getting more into the action orientation and showing the way in terms of what solutions are needed to achieve a different kind of healthcare system. The second one is expanding the scope of practice of registered nurses. I'm distressed by the fact that our scope of practice is guided or limited by the geography in which we practice or the shift in which we work. Uh, depending on morning, evening, or night shift, the scope of practice becomes different in different settings. That has to change, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the theme of leading always, no matter where we find ourselves in, regardless of the geography, the setting of choice, the patient populations that we work with, the idea would be lead always. Find your leadership core and lead from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The theme of our conference is challenging the status quo. And as community health nurses, our sort of byline is that we're the leaders for a healthy Canada. What you're saying, I think, is music to a lot of our ears, but I'm wondering if you can bring it down to where you see community health nursing fits into that nurse for the future as well. I think community health nurses can show us the way. You are already operating from the core principles of primary health care, mm -hmm. and those core principles have to be brought into the forefront to guide the development of the next formulation of the healthcare system, we need that. 80% of our health status is determined not by the settings in which healthcare is delivered by or who's delivering the healthcare. It's determined by those things we call the determinants of health. Mm -hmm. I think community health nurses interact with those determinants of health in a very intimate and crucial way. So you would have no difficulty as community health nurses understanding the impact of income, inequity, exactly. transportation, housing on the health status of people. If we could bring the same sensibility of primary health care into emergency settings, acute care settings, mm -hmm. um, oncology settings, it doesn't matter the populations or the settings in which we work. It's the principles and the core from which we practice. You could show us the way. Community health nurses live that every day. Mm -hmm. And you could show Canadians, but particularly nurses in Canada, the way in which we can unleash ourselves within those principles and really guide the next generation healthcare system because we need that in Canada. Mm -hmm. In Canada, we are the, if you look at the OECD comparisons, we spend a lot of money per capita mm -hmm. on healthcare. So, in a comparison of 10 countries, as an example, we are the second highest spender of healthcare per capita, but our outcomes are the second lowest after the United States. And if we took the issue of cost of healthcare out of the questions, we would be ranked the lowest in terms of the outcomes we produce on behalf of the populations that we serve. I don't think Canadians understand that because no. our healthcare system is, we enshrine it. We believe in it, it's a value system for us. So very few of us would be aware of the fact that the outcomes of a healthcare system are not what they need to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't think nurses are consistently aware of that fact. And we happen to be the largest group of healthcare professionals in the country. We are the most trusted healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. We have a responsibility. I think it's an obligation, a duty, to step up and bring that voice forward for Canadians. Yeah, I would agree with everything you've said. <laughs>
So this conference, as Anne said, the theme is challenging the status quo, and it's really resonated uh, with the program committee and with mm -hmm. the, the board of directors and um, the folks that I talk to that are planning to attend and, and uh, will be coming to Winnipeg to that conference. So how do you think then we challenge that status quo? You know, what do we use? What are the tools or places in us that we, you know, what do we use to do that, to challenge that status quo? Make it more than words, but make it action live. and live, breathe, have life, you know? As I said, you have to unleash yourself. So I certainly try and find that ability in myself in leading CNA, having the privilege to lead this beautiful organization collectively with others, we are trying to unleash the Canadian Nurses Association of the future. So I think the first and foremost responsibility to move to action is to find your courage to unleash, meaning really step up and take responsibility because the public in Canada, the citizens of Canada, want that, they deserve that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to know the evidence. So you can't move to action if you don't know what you are talking about. So I really talk about moving from advocacy to action. We can't be speaking of advocacy in generic or theoretical terms anymore, bringing broad ideas to the table, because the politicians don't know what to do with broad ideas. Taking senior care as an example. Yes, good example. Yep. When we, we in the past have brought messages, for example, to uh, Parliament Hill about the need for a senior strategy. And you know CMA is very involved in bringing that advocacy forward as well. So we've been working with them, but we've also had our own unique advocacy effort on behalf of senior care because of the uh, demographic shift towards many, many more seniors than we have ever imagined, one out of four in every Canada in a few years. Mm -hmm. So that message has not landed well because politicians don't know what to do with that message necessarily. So at CNA, we are learning to unpack that message. It's not about needing a senior care strategy anymore. It's about unpacking it into actionable yes. Yep. asks, uh -huh. specific asks that are based on evidence. And then when you pitch that, people can relate to that. So we are talking now about we need coherent standards for home care for mm -hmm. seniors across Canada. And frankly, it's not just for seniors. We have a patchwork of home care systems yes, yep. in Canada. Majority of us want to be at home yep. as we are experiencing our illness or health journeys, if you will, seniors want to be in their home settings as they age. So the ability to gather home care services varies hugely across a country, according to your geography, according to the income you make. The poorest of the seniors have very little ability to gather the right type of home care. We want to shift that. So we've called for national standards for home care. We've also called for fitness program for seniors embedded in the community. Because mm -hmm. in fact, if I think of my mother who's aging, she needs some support at home to keep her healthy. And if I can support her well at home with health promotion programs, fitness programs that are embedded in her apartment and so on, she'll be able to live a beautiful, productive life in her home mm -hmm. with episodic interactions with the healthcare system. But we don't bring care into the community. We, in fact, make people go into institutional places mm -hmm. to get care. Mm -hmm. That has to shift. And the last thing we've asked for is um, making the caregiver tax credit refundable in mm -hmm. Canada so that the people who need it the most can gather the monetary advantage to help their loved ones age at home. So and we need to support so caregivers. Policy. Right? It's policy. That would be policy. Mm -hmm. It's policy in a different way. In a different way. Yeah. It's, it's not the status quo policy of b big, broad messages. Mm -hmm. It's bite-sized chunks of things yeah. that can be taken to the finish line. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. 
So I'm going to take it a little further too. You're talking, you've talked about seniors and about unbundling the care and, and, I, and I've also heard you talk a bit about from a different um, age group focus about looking at that more upstream, that preventative, that, yes. that way, that push that way to so prevent people from having to go into institutions. So looking at a different population like across the demographics, would you have any thoughts around like child maternal health or that? It's a big political push right now as well. I have been an international volunteer for as long as I can think. So I've been in different countries in Africa. Mm -hmm. I've been in Asia. I've been to Afghanistan three times. And when I'm there, the major thing that I'm touching as a nurse, and I go into nurse mode, by the way. Yeah. I'm into provi provision of nursing care mode when I'm in those countries. Mm -hmm. The biggest interaction I have when I'm in those countries is with maternal child issues. They are the foremost issues that stare you in your face. Yeah. And people don't realize that we have those very issues in our, in our great country called Canada that the disparities in maternal child issue, you just have to look at the Aboriginal population mm -hmm. and look at the infant mortality rate in that population, maternal mortality. You can't believe that it, you would find that kind of a reality in a country like Canada. We have disparities in our own backyards that we have to address. When I met um, um, the health minister, Rona Ambrose, in, at one of our events that we were at together, I say to her, I, I applaud the Prime Minister for taking a big, bold step in shaping maternal child services across the world, but he needs to put an equivalent amount of effort within this country that he's leading, yes. here, here. because we need, yes. we need attention to those issues. And again, they fall largely in the health promotion prevention space. Yes. And nurses are the foremost and the predominant caregivers who touch that space. Yes. We have to step it up mm -hmm. in a different way. Thank you. I think we're almost down to our last question now. So I'd like, to, based on what we've heard, which is very inspiring, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask if you have a last word of advice for the community health nurses in the room. My advice to us collectively to you, the group who are the community health nurses, but to us collectively for nursing, is let us find our blue ocean space. And what do I mean by that? We are so busy finding our space or claiming our space in the zones that I call red ocean zones for nursing. Zones where we are competing for scopes of practice, we don't have our scope of practice, for example, in many institutional settings, majority of what we do is determined by the orders someone else will write mm -hmm. that we have to follow in order to practice. And I'm saying that's a red zone for us. It's a competitive zone where we are competing with others for scope. Mm -hmm. Unleash ourselves. Take us out of that space and find the blue ocean areas of nursing, things that nurses will do best. So health promotion prevention is a grand example. Community is a beautiful space for nursing. Mm -hmm. Schools where nurses have been pulled out. Yes. Frankly, it's, it's unbelievable. Yes. We need to find, put nurses back in those settings because that's where we will impact on the healthcare status of the population in the best possible way. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you for your time. This has been a wonderful opportunity. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for inviting me. Mm -hmm.